You know, while on the preparation stage before shooting this video, I talked to our technicians, installers, our salesman, and I was researching and I've seen how other technicians answer this question. So I don't pretend to be original, but those, but these are the most common mistakes done through many years till now by us and our clients who reach to us seeking for answer. And thus, I'll be answering from this position. My name is Daniel, People System Store, where you can get any level of security system for yourself. We begin. Subscribe to People Systems YouTube channel and get your special offer on every deal. Wrong subnet and checking a conformity. Totally a number one among all other items on the list, judging by a repeat rate. You purchased a network camera, got home, you are powering it, inserting the network cable, activating it and nothing happens. Camera is still offline, you don't get a video, what's wrong? A default network settings are different from the ones that you have within your network. And here's how a regular IP address look like, where zero is a subnet number. It may be other number from 1 to 254, but the point is that this, is, uh, this number is one item that you have to check in case you don't get a video from camera over internet. It's likely that you need to modify just a single number, like changing that 0 to 1 and that will do the thing. 5 Hz signal frequency instead of supported 2.4 Hz. Which frequencies your Wi-Fi router is running on? 2.4 or 5 GHz? There's a lot of advantages of 5 Hz over older 2.4, except range, but yet a majority of Wi-Fi security cameras are working under 2.4 Hz frequencies. And this is changing, but still, in such case you'll be wondering, what did go wrong if everything was done right? And this actually isn't that obvious. I remember I caught myself on such a mistake. Lack of power on the camera, meaning that depending on the distance or on that a one cable is supplying too many cameras at once, a different power voltage gets to the camera. Like for instance, your camera is 12 volt and you power it from 12 volt power supply and everything seems to be correct. But if for example the distance is 20 meters or above, then eventually less power gets to the camera, like 10 volt only. And also this can be seen if, let's say, the quality of the video noticeably worsens at night. So why? Because the infrared lights are switching on and also require power. And your camera is already getting less power and now even worse. And as a result, interferences on video. The camera is randomly going on and off. This matter. And this has to be considered too. That's a summary amount of power needed for cameras. It's bigger than what power supply unit can deliver. And this is a frequent one. Mention detection sensitivity. And here's the thing. You install the camera. You turned on notifications or alarm triggering by a motion in camera site. And now you're testing it and it doesn't work or isn't accurate. And you're trying to adjust camera's position, different incline angle, but it doesn't work. So why? Because it's normal. <laughs> because a default sensitivity or of a PIR sensor is set to middle level. And now if such problem occurs with you, get into camera settings and raise a sensitivity level so that when you will be testing it, your every move is being registered. Detection zone wrong setup. So when drawing a detection zone, are you selecting the entire picture? Because if you are, you will have a lot of false alarms. Well, because you are not excluding moving objects like trees and their leaves that are fluctuating throughout the entire day. And the same is applicable to sun rays, as we've got an image change detection type. Pixels, in other words, the sun and its rays angle and position may also cause false alarms, as they are changing throughout the entire day too. Infrared IR LED lights. Blocking cameras LED lights and IR lightning reflecting from glass. The matter of installation. To make sure cameras IR LED lights are having free view and nothing is blocking them. 
that's quite common, we expect the camera to switch into night mode to make it able to see at night in black and white due to built-in infrared LEDs that light up a scene and which lighting is invisible to human eye. And there are two mistakes done here. First, installing the camera that way, so its view or a part of view is blocked by a wall or some objects located near a lens in its field of view. Or when you install the camera in front of the glass window so a large piece of image is taken by glass. In both scenarios, camera's infrared light is reflecting back to camera and night view feature is completely unfunctional. Skimping on wiring. And that's an interesting one. For instance, from the pixel and higher resolution cameras are common now. And I can't call them cheap. And what I frequently see is that people purchasing cheap wires along with a 4 megapixel or higher cameras. And mostly because they don't know how a cable quality affects an image quality. And by the image quality, I mean a image pureness and clearness. The absence of lags, glitches, interferences, graining and blur. And first of all, that should be a copper wire, not a bimetallic one. And also, these are a different cables for indoor and outdoor ones in few scenarios. But the opposite of this is that sometimes people take good wires but don't know how to use them. Like there are UTP, FTP and SFTP types. And sometimes they get good FTP cables but are not grounding it and are using cheap plastic connectors instead of good iron ones. Old firmware. Such a common and frequent mistake is simply a device running an old firmware. And you usually stumble upon this when you have done everything completely right, but some functions are just not working. I mean, let's say you have purchased a camera of 2019 launch year, and now it's 2020, and manufacturer more likely released an update, even several ones probably, like improving stability, adding some new functions, and etc. So the first thing to do after you get the cam out of the box, check a thing where relevance. This issue exists literally because you are not connecting your camera to the cloud. Either way, in the phone app or any cloud service, you will see a prompt telling that a new firmware update is available and all you have to do is to just accept its download and installation with one button press on the phone. And obviously it's important, but it's easy to miss this in sight. Wi-Fi camera system. This one is about expectations of a stability and reliability from a Wi-Fi camera system and outdoor cameras especially. So there's a lot of pros of having a Wi-Fi camera system in your home, but the biggest and one of very few only disadvantages is Wi-Fi type video transmission because there are enemies of Wi-Fi signal. It's rain, snow, storms and similar. And also that's a network overload. The more network devices you've got within your network, the bigger is network load and consequently the worse signal strength is for every single device. And considering the fact that video footage is not some sort of small files but a big and constant one, expect your video surveillance system to load your network really hard. And the solution is to get a separate network for video surveillance system, especially if that's a big system. In such case, you will divide home appliance and computers and phones from a video surveillance system that loads a network really hard. A video recorder selection. What recording resolution is supported on your video recorder that you are choosing? Uh, 4, 6, 8 megapixels? You get to answer this question when selecting a video recorder. And a one more on top, channels amount on an NVR or DVR. Plan ahead. You're planning three or four cameras and the four channel recorder take eight channel recorder instead. Why? Well, because if you would want to add a one more camera, which is actually running, let's say, bigger resolution uh, to your setup, you will have to buy a video recorder supporting bigger resolution and having eight channels for connecting cameras. Thus, you are overpaying. Think ahead, it matters here. Storage capacity. You are not actually calculating the required storage size in accordance 
with camera's resolution, camera's quantity and the recording type. Motion or any other event triggered recording or a continuous. How much 4K resolution video from camera will take space? That's really a one more question to answer when selecting a video surveillance system. The bonus one, not securing connections. When those cables and ports joints are not watertight and weatherproof like this, no mounting box, no weatherproof clips over cables and port joints, don't be surprised when any wind and weather kills your system. When selecting a video surveillance system, there are many factors and pitfalls that only professionals can see. They often get calls that sound like, I just want this camera, and that's it. And then it turns out that person needs a completely different camera for his occasion, and we get a refund. This is your time and your money. Don't do that. Everything mentioned earlier. Or, well, let the professionals do it. In the People System Store, we can help you select your perfect camera or your perfect camera system. We've got, oh, we've got a lot. We've got uh, network cameras, analog field light cameras, cameras intended for night vision, and many else. And if you indicate that you are our subscriber, we'll make a more interesting offer for you. And by the way, need help? Questions, descriptions of your tasks? They are always welcome in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.